What is up YouTube? How's everybody out there doing today? I hope you guys are having a fabulous freaking day. Obviously, you see the t-shirt that I have on. You know what this video is going to be about. And that's why you clicked on it. Because you were like, you know what? That's pretty freaking awesome. And I want to watch that video because I want to see this truck turn into, oh my god, the sun is literally, literally blinding me in my face. In my freaking face. But regardless of that, Obviously, you guys know why you're here watching the video, and uh, I hope you enjoy it because it's going to be a good one. But a uh, little, little bit of thinking, a little backstory here. So there's some things coming for the good old Dirty Max, the good old Dirty Max sitting outside, which we will be bringing in here soon. And one of them, obviously, is my air dog that I just got. Um, really, really awesome company. First link in the description. If you guys want to go check them out, if you have a diesel. And needs an air dog man check these guys out they're freaking awesome fast shipping just really really nice to talk to really really awesome awesome guys to talk to but i hit them up and i was like yo dogs yo i need an upgraded fuel lift pump setup for my truck because the one that's currently on there right now is old as dirt and outdated and just doesn't seem to freaking want to you know be up to standards i'll show you what it is down here be up to standards with uh with what i need and what i need to get done so i was like yo dogs you want to you want to help me out man i want one of your lift pumps and i'm gonna freaking put that thing on and it's gonna be freaking awesome and they were like yeah dog we got you i was like oh shit they got me and i was like that's freaking awesome this is my city coming out <laughs> but yeah so i got the air dog in the mail it is a 165 4g one of their new ones uh 165 4g uh dual water separator fuel filter setups we're going to go over here and take a look at it because i know you guys are dying to see all the stuff that comes with it but got a cool little t-shirt got a nice little banner freaking awesome people but here it is so we got our filter uh, separator setup. Um, so here's our separator, water separator. Here's our fuel filter. It is the Air Dog 2 4G. It is a DF165 model fuel air separation system. Ba -ba 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 Bam! Comes with your plating system. Um, I don't know what this is for, but I'll read the instructions and find out. Here's this right here. This is um, basically what this does is this feeds the fuel back into your gas tank that it does not need. Here's all your hoses, which are rated at 300 PSI, which is freaking awesome. You got some O-rings, replacement O-rings if you need them. You got some band clamps, got all these connectors, and you have a full wiring harness as well, which is freaking awesome. And of course, you can't forget the instructions. You got to have the instructions, which is, you know, pretty freaking awesome. Without these, you don't know what the hell you're doing with all this crap here. So I came to the conclusion with this truck since i've been doing so much storm work with uh john that well i wouldn't say so much st storm work but since i've been going away here and there um periodically for a couple days you know two three days at a time with john doc doing storm work and helping to recover um you know some of these unfortunate people that are caught in these storms that uh you know need help and need power back up and and stuff like that uh, i figured you know what i think it's time to fully dedicate my truck to be a storm recovery truck when it is needed and then obviously during storms here in pa um even if i'm not doing storm work for john duck but you know say unfortunately i come across a car or a truck that's stuck in a ditch that needs to be towed out or recovered out of a ditch or something of that nature just needs some help you know what i mean gotta be a nice guy need some help my truck is ready and prepared to do that and i think one of the very first things uh that would help that happen is this new fuel setup i think it's going to give it the proper amount of fuel new lines all that stuff that it's going to need in order to you know feed the engine and help the engine survive even after its 500,000 mile uh you know achievement um i think this is going to help it so i'm very very happy to be able to put one of these on i'm very very happy to get the old setup off of here because the old setup is falling apart like it's, it, the lines are kind of getting dry rotted you'll see that as i take that apart and it's only one filter it's a very very old setup it's honestly probably been on the truck probably 
since the truck was built, to be honest. Um, somebody put it on, it is an aftermarket setup, but uh, somebody put it on probably 20 freaking years ago and it's been on there ever since. But it's time for an upgrade and AirDog has definitely hooked us up with the upgrade that we needed. So let's pull this thing in the shop, start tearing this old setup completely off of the truck and get ready to install the new setup, guys. So as you guys can see here, we have the full quote unquote type of assembly that we're doing here. You got your tank, your engine fuel in, all that stuff. It's basically a little schematic of, of what it's gonna look like. But we definitely are gonna be following the instructions here, guys, because this is a, you know, this ain't a, ain't a little easy stuff that you can just kind of do. You kind of gotta pay attention to what you, you're doing and follow the directions as per. So we're gonna go step through step here and uh, start putting this together because there's some fittings. We need to put these fittings in and stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get that done. And then kind of get this ready to install. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start tearing the old setup out. I kind of want to get this kind of together uh, to where I know I can just, you know, pull the old setup out and boom, start installing the new setup without having to mess around with too much stuff. So let's get that all together and go from there. And that's what the inside of the Air Dog 165 looks like for your water separator and your fuel filter. So then, now that we have our fittings in, we need to go ahead and mount our top plate, um, which looks like it goes this way, like so. Bingo. So then, we have our Things like this, front buyer, and our, not washers, our washer heel, like that, and obviously our nut to hold it in place. And then you do that four more times. <laughs> four more times. Definitely going to need an Allen wrench to tighten this down and center it and everything because it looks like it can go two different directions, or it can go side to side, which is cool. Gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, movement action. So that way if it's not centered the way you like it, you can go ahead and move it around at your own leisure, which is freaking awesome. It is nice to have the adjustability um, on this setup. <laughs> That is cool. Oh, I dropped my nut. I dropped my nut. <laughs> I would definitely recommend on these fittings apply a little bit of blue grease or uh, oil or something. That way you don't mess up the O-ring when you install it because that would suck a lot as well. So here we go with this now. There we go. So you can have a little bit of, a little, not much, but a little bit of side to side movement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an Allen key, tighten these nuts down right here, and boom, one step closer. Okay, we have our bracket nice and secure on there. Ain't going anywhere. Yeah. So, just so you guys know, obviously this all faces out. Oh, I put it on backwards, I'm an idiot. Oh, I put it on backwards. Yep. <laughs> Don't listen to me guys, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, so it is on backwards, unfortunately. The two spouts 
here, or these guys, need to face the front of the vehicle. Now, obviously, if I was putting this on the inside of the truck, the inside frame rail, I want it to be facing towards the front and this towards the rear back here. But since I think I'm going to be putting it on the uh, outside of the frame, so it's going to be, you know, between the frame and the body, um, this is technically backwards, so I got to... I gotta turn this around. <laughs> but basically, that's what they're showing in the in the in the instructions here. As you can see, front and rear, all that stuff. Hopefully, you guys can see that. In the way of that, I'm putting it on. I put it on backwards. But if, I, like I said, if I was putting it on the inside of the frame rail, this would be perfect. But I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be putting it on the outside of the frame rail, which means I need to turn this around. <laughs> all right. After sitting here and doing some thinking. I decided after watching Truck Master's video for a little bit of guidance on installation of this setup on a Duramax, which by the way, he does an amazing job and a full detailed uh, video on where the connections go and all that stuff. I decided I kind of do like the fact that those filters are hidden behind the frame and you can't see them. As, as you know, you can see this one, but in all honesty, I mean, it doesn't really matter like the trucks lifted if I need to change those filters I can change them and plus the nice thing is they're gonna be kind of out of the way and hidden and To be honest with you, I, I almost kind of like that to be honest. So in this case since Maybe he needs an air dog <laughs> In this case, I'm gonna leave the bracket exactly the way it is and I'm gonna set it up exactly how truck master set his up and uh, put it together that way because I, like I said, I kind of like, kind of like the way it was. Um, you know, I, I want to put it on the outside just to be like, oh look, I have my my lift pump on the outside. Everybody can see it. Woo! But you know what? I just want it to be functional and working, and I kind of like the fact that it's hidden behind the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bracket together, and that's what we're gonna do. After we put the bracket together for this, we're gonna go ahead and start uninstalling everything from the old lift pump that's on the truck right now, get that whole assembly out of that truck, and then we can start mounting our new setup. Let's plate the block, put these four bolts in here like so. And these are the positions that we're gonna have them in. So two empty, two bolts, and two empty, same as the bottom, two empty two bolts and two empty and then we got to turn this sucker over here like so and then this guy this little plastic plate basically goes like that and then this goes like that hopefully you guys can see that there i'll turn it around for you oh hello and then at that point what you're going to do is you're going to take your four washers and nuts and you're going to go ahead and you're going to put them on holy smokes what an adventure guys i have to say what an adventure getting this this thing off of here. It looks like it's a fast. Oh, there's fuel leaking. I don't even care. So basically, what these uh, lift pumps do is this. There's my line, and originally that line right there would go up on top to the fuel, uh, not pump, but there's not a pump in these tanks, but it would be the fuel pickup. So the fuel pickup line would go across the top here and connect to this line, which went obviously would connect to my fuel line, go up to the engine bay to my CP3 pump and my filtration system up there and all that stuff. Now, what this lift pump's gonna do, just like the old one did, is it basically goes in line from the main line coming out of the tank to this line. So instead of having one solid line going from there, you know, back on the top of the tank to here, you're putting a pump in between that to pump fuel up to the engine bay. Um, so basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna mount my setup right about there. I think right about there, somewhere. Yeah, right about there. I'm gonna mount my setup right about there. 
and then I'm going to um, run my lines and basically my supply line coming out of the tank is going to go to my lift pump which is going to be in this area here and then the other line coming out of the lift pump is going to go and go back into this line here so I hope you guys all understand that. And then the little tube is going to go into the tube that's going to go into um, this guy right here. So, yeah, let's get that mounted and show you what it looks like. Get to see my bald head. And we get to put this thing on here. So, let's see how this is going to fit. Because we definitely got to make sure... Uh, that oh yeah I do kind of I do kind of like that I'm not gonna lie let's secure this one here hopefully you guys can see the truck but it's almost like it's not even there and uh, that's pretty nice I kind of like I kind of like that so we're gonna go ahead and bolt this all up and then we're gonna start running our line now when assembling these lines, I highly recommend you buy yourself one of these tools here. It is a hose cutter. It is definitely handy. You can buy them at Harbor Freight. And that's what we're going to be cutting the hose with. This is one long piece of hose. As you can see, we have these fittings, these bar bend fittings that go on the end. Now, the other thing I highly recommend is you buy yourself some, you know, some lithium grease or some transmission assembly goo. Some, I call it blue goo, blue grease. Get some, some of that or oil or anything. It's definitely going to make things easier for you to, oh God. Oh God, <laughs> definitely going to make, oh God, I did it again. Oh God. It's definitely, like I was saying, definitely going to make it easier sticking these guys in here and get them fully seated up against the end here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some blue grease on the end of this sucker and uh, give her hell. And this blue grease does not hurt anything if, if it mixes with, mix with the fuel. So you don't have to worry about none of that bull crap. Like, oh my God, is that going to hurt the fuel? Da, 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 da. No, it's like a lubricant. So very, very simple. This will go right in. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It can't get any simpler than that. It cannot get any simpler than that. If you see that black hose, that black hose is connected up to the gas tank or the fuel tank. I'm sorry, the fuel tank right there. And then I have it going down here, down there, down here, and right there it ends. So basically, I need to measure out and cut and have that line go to this fitting here. This is going to be the fuel in fitting right there. Um, that's where you're going to want to hook this line to. So the line going from the gas tank or from the fuel tank up at the top is going to go to your single inlet on the one side. Notice you have two inlets or two outlets on one side. One's going to be a return. The other one's going to go to the engine. This one's going to be the inlet right here. So that line gets there. So what we'll do is we'll get our barbed fitting. We'll lube it up and we'll probably cut this line to length and then feed it up above these lines here and connect it up and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Yeah. Look at that guys. God, it just, it doesn't get any easier than that. And then put our fitting on and let's see, do we want to run it up above or do we want to run it down below? What's going to be the, ah, look. Down below is going to be a much better option, in my opinion, personally. All right, so what I ended up doing was my supply line to my engine right here, basically. I ended up running over here like so, up against this line so I could tie wrap it here, up against the um, ABS setup so I can tie wrap it up against uh, the wiring for there as well and then right up into the unit itself. Now you have to keep in mind, do not make these bends too sharp because it'll kink the hose. Um, so you gotta make sure they flow really, really good. So the next thing we gotta do is obviously hook up our tube inside of that guy there, run our angle off of here and then run that to the uh, metal tube there. So let's get that done and I'll show you what that looks like then. And then we'll start doing wiring and tightening everything up, making it look pretty again. 
Alrighty, so everything tube wise is hooked up as you guys can see right here. So I ended up facing, now make sure you put this tube in correctly because it does have arrows to point towards the tank. So make sure you put that in correctly. Two band clamps, hold everything back up again. And then you have your return hose. Had that coming around here, through there. I'm gonna tie wrap, tie wrap it up here. And, and then it goes over to here. So that's our return hose set up right there. We're gonna end up tie wrapping that all up under here, like maybe probably to the brake line, as you can see, and get that all situated. Tie wrap all this up. Make sure that's all loosey goosey and not kinked in any way. Uh, we gotta put our drive shaft back up and that metal flange back up, which ain't no big deal. And then comes the wiring, which really the wiring isn't that bad. Um, pretty much you run this plug or the harness. Well, you know, what? I'll just show you. It's easier for me just to show you than to talk about it. But here is our harness setup, okay? It is one complete harness. It is plug and play. It literally has, ah, come here, it has one plug on it. This plug plugs into the lift pump. You have your ground and your positive. So this gets a, hooked up to battery positive. This gets hooked up to either battery ground or chassis ground, wherever you can find a, a good ground. Obviously battery ground is gonna be the best ground. And then you have your relay set up, your fuse set up in here. And this little guy here literally goes into your fuse block to an ignition switch to, or switchable fuse for ignition and it all plugs in there and that is it guys like literally that is it the the hardest part is of this wiring is going to be running it up into the engine bay which isn't even that hard so we're going to go ahead and get that all done i'll show you where i'm going to hook this into and where i connect these wires as well so you have a reference point and uh but in the meantime we're just going to go ahead and uh, put the drive shaft back up, tie everything up, make it look nice and pretty and neat. And then last but not least, obviously wiring, which really isn't that big of a deal, but uh, let's get finishing this thing up, guys. All right, guys, so all my hoses are tied up underneath. I ended up putting the air dog sticker on the plate. You know, you got to, you got to represent, you know what I mean? And it looked like such a great little spot for it. And I figured, you know what? You really can't see anything, but you know what that little sticker, you kind of see it, but you don't. You really don't know what's behind that frame. It could be some massive horsepower mod, or it could just be an air dog that helps you make massive horsepower. But got all my wiring ran up along my frame up here. And then we'll go over here like so. Ran my hot wire to my distribution block for my 12 volt source. Ran the ground right down there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Tied all my wires up, put my relay up against the firewall right there. Stuffed all these wires down here. There is a lot of extra wiring left over, but it's not a big deal. I put my little uh, add a fuse right here and I put it on an O1. I put it in the ignition E 10 amp one right there. If you can see that, the ignition E, I put it on that one there. Um, that should be more than fine. Uh, you know what? It's not in, the, it's not in that one. What am I doing? I'm messing up already. <laughs> I put in the wrong one, guys. This is why you should always double check shit. <laughs> All right. So originally I had it in, I might get another 10 amp fuse for that. It doesn't seem like it's getting in there very tight. That was actually the ECM fuse. This is the ignition fuse. As per you see, number four ECM. And right behind it was the 10 amp ignition fuse. I'm actually gonna get another 10 amp fuse here because this one doesn't seem to be wanting to like kinda stick in the hole nice and tight. And I want it to be nice and tight in the hole. <laughs> but uh, let's look for another 10 amper here. There's a good 10 amper. Always have fuses on standby, guys. You never know when you're gonna need a spare. But uh, I definitely want the fuse to be nice and tight in there, not weak. Oh yeah, that's much better. And then in she goes. All right, so she's in there. It is completely wired up. I cut a little slit here, that way the wire can go through and not be perturbed about anything. And my thingy goes back on very nicely. 
And that's pretty much it. The only thing left to do is to prime the system and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. But first, I figure, so I'm going through all this trouble of changing out um, the lift system, you know, fuel lift system. I figure, wouldn't it be a great time? It's, it's been about almost 10,000 miles now since I've done, or since the fuel filter up in the engine bay was done. I got a good old AC Delco one right here. So it's been about 10,000 miles and I figure this would be the perfect time to go ahead and switch out that as well. So let's get the old one out, get the new one in. So what we got to do is we're going to start the system up. Oh, I forgot to cut that tie wrap right there. I'm not too concerned about it. It ain't going anywhere. Make sure your water filter is tight and make sure your fuel filter is a little loose not too tight because basically what you're going to do is when we when i turn the key over and prime this it's going to start feeding fuel start sucking fuel out of the tank here this guy right there i'm going to crawl under here and if not if it's not already dripping i'm going to crack it open just a hair and crack it shut and and it should bleed out pretty fast so ugh, if i hooked up everything correctly which who knows <laughs> this thing should start making noise and it is it's making noise i can hear it so now the fun messy part make sure you have a bucket there we go and oh yeah there we go yeah oh yeah there we go all right let's start her up after we tighten that up we'll spray it down tighten it up and start her up all righty let's hop up in here and uh get my hat back on if everything was done correctly this thing should fire up and have no leaks no drifts no errors i can hear the pump going oh, oh. wow I must have done something right. Oh, there's a little air in the line still. That's all that is. <laughs> Show fire. I've done this before. Make sure she doesn't have any leaks or drips here. She sounds okay. There we go. She just needs a little bit of priming, that's all. I did take that top filter out, so with that top filter being out, yes, it's gonna take a little bit longer to start. Let her run her course here. She's probably still got a little bit of air left in her. But she'll, uh, oh my God, she'll get out. Uh, alrighty. Not leaking down there. Everything's looking good up here. And she's running good. She sounds good. Very happy about that. Very happy. <laughs> Crawl underneath one last time, just to make sure we don't have no leaks or drips or errors of any type. And everything seems to be working. Yeah. Yeah, she's working. Sounds like she's working. all over the place all righty we're gonna go ahead and clean that a little bit of that blue grease off that filter there we go there we go 
make it look pretty like pretty definitely doing something it's definitely working Ooh. definitely working i am super duper ecstatic super duper ecstatic all right guys obviously we need our thumbnail we gotta have our thumbnail so here it is <laughs> that's a pretty good thumbnail not gonna lie curiosity guys this thing actually starts up a little bit faster too now before it started up had a little bit of a hesitation like it was kind of like it would take like three to four seconds to fire um now it seems to be firing almost in two seconds that's freaking awesome man what a great product guys what a freaking awesome add-on to your uh your diesel truck if you're looking for something like that definitely worth the money 110 definitely worth the money Definitely. There is one other cool, very, very cool thing about this I got to show you. I was actually reading it, and uh, I'm not going to mess with it because I don't know too much about it. But in the destructions here, let me see where I see it in here in the destructions. The destructions. Uh, ah. Oh, uh, no, not that page. This page right here. So, what's cool about this system is you can actually adjust the fuel pressure if need be so that's pretty cool it gives you instructions on how to do that i'm actually just going to leave it the way where, where it is um but it's cool to know that i can adjust the fuel pressure if i ever do desire to like say for example you know if i end up going compound turbo or something of that nature um i know i can up the pressure of that pump and uh, send more fuel pressure up the rail or up to the CP3 pump, basically up through the filter, which makes me super duper 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 happy to be honest, super duper happy. But uh, man, that thing, I mean, it worked. Don't get me wrong. This system did work, but the air dog system is gonna work a whole lot better guys, a whole lot better and I am super happy, but there you go. Pretty good video on how to install that. I wanna definitely, like I said, give a huge, huge shout out to um, Truckmaster. Uh, he, you know, I watched his video of the Air Dog install and he did a very, very, very good thorough install. And I did, I tried to do that my best, you know, do my best to give you guys a, a thorough install of um, putting this Air Dog in this truck or in my truck or in any truck really per se, <laughs> there's always instructions. So look at the instructions and you'll know how to do it. But yeah, big thanks to him. I watched his video and he definitely helped me out a lot on what to do, what not to do. And especially with that, um, <laughs> with that hiding the filters and the unit behind the frame so you can't really see it. I actually thought that was a pretty damn good idea, but obviously I had to put the sticker on there too, just to represent, you know what I mean guys? But uh, yeah, there you have it. All done, working perfectly. Super duper happy about that. But uh, on to the next mod. We have a move bumper coming eventually. We're gonna be putting a new bumper on here with a winch mount and everything. It's gonna look freaking badass and I can't wait for it to show up. And once it does, whoo, we're gonna be doing a couple videos on that as well. But uh, some of the other little mods I'd like to do is I definitely am looking at doing a deeper uh, transmission pan with fins. And of course, ow, I got some my eyeball. Out of course, of course, you know, if you have a lifted truck, 
you have to have a cool freaking rear girdle for your differential. You're just not cool if you don't have that rear finned girdle, you know, for the differential. So I'm definitely going to be looking into a, a cover for that as well. So that'd be pretty cool. So look out for those future videos and uh, hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, do me a huge, huge favor. Give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, Instagram, Diablo Formula Racing and deuces guys.